What is going on everybody? Thank you guys so much for joining me and welcome back to the channel. And for today's video, I got a bit of an interesting topic to cover here. I'm going to be discussing some teams and where I feel they rank in terms of the pressure that they are facing entering this season to win a Stanley Cup. And I will be covering every single division, so I'll rank them by number one being who has the most pressure to win a cup this season and number eight being who has the least pressure so for today's video we're gonna kick things off with the atlantic division before i give you guys my rankings i'm gonna give you a little bit of a breakdown on what i feel are some factors that bring pressure for a team to win a stanley cup so first thing i'm gonna be looking at is basically the overall age of the group especially the core of some of those teams you know some cores who have you know older players on their team you know key pieces that are much older there's gonna be some more pressure facing them than other teams who you know are not as old more like in their mid-20s and stuff like that or not expected to compete for a playoff spot even which would lead to my next point also being expectation what is expected of this team entering this season are they expected to compete for a stanley cup make the playoffs just squeak into the playoffs or not not at all projected to make the playoffs you know that could factor in some pressure as well one more thing before i get started i'm just going to preface this right now in case people you know pop on this video and did not read the title this is not my season standings predictions of who i think is going to win the division who i think is going to be last place in the division it has nothing to do with what i feel what my opinions are where these teams will stand it's just on where i feel the most pressure lies for some teams compared to others so you know don't get it twisted there if you're interested to see what my standings predictions are for a lot of these teams and where i feel they stand this season in their respective divisions go check those videos out i've covered every single team so you know click on those if you're interested all right so getting right into the start here eighth place the team that i feel has the least pressure to win a stanley cup this season it's the Buffalo Sabres. I mean, this is very obvious for me. They're obviously a team that is tanking right now. I mean, they shut off a ton of pieces. Their goaltending tandem looks completely different. It's Aaron Dell and Craig Anderson right now. Defensively, they took a step back as well. They trade away Rasmus Bristolainen, who, I mean, did not have the greatest stretch there, but was a top pair defenseman on this team. And of course, Eichel being injured, there is some concerns with that and how they handle that situation. And obviously, they're looking to trade him. But obviously, there's no pressure on this team to do anything. I mean, the roster right now, their best forwards, Victor Olofsson, who's pretty decent, but like, is he really a star player in this league? I don't know. Casey Middlestat maybe has some upside, only being like 22 years old, could be the number one center next season. Had some stretches of really solid play, especially in the second half of the season. But, you know, if that's the best players this team is dressing, uh, that's not very good. And I don't think there's any pressure for this team to do anything this season. Number seven, I think it's Detroit Red Wings. Another team, not a ton of pressure. I feel like obviously they're expected to take some strides, take some steps forward because they do have a lot of solid young pieces up and coming. Obviously, Moritz Sider being on the blue line, he's expected to make an immediate impact. Guys like Joe Valeno, Lucas Raymond, Philip Zadina looking to take steps forward, especially Zadina who's already been on the team, but those other guys looking to crack the roster and make a huge impact on this young Red Wings team. Then you got the core. I mean, Philip Horonic is your number one defenseman right now. He's only 23 years old, so he could still, he still has room to grow potentially. Dylan Larkin, Verana, both 25. Tyler Bertuzzi's 26. There is a solid young core here building, and there's going to be a lot of years for this team to compete for a cup down the line. But as of right now, there is no pressure on this team to do anything. I don't think they're expected to make the playoffs, but maybe, you know, take some strides and get a little bit better, be more competitive and be more of a pain to play against. And at number six here, I have the Ottawa Senators. This is another team like the Red Wings. I don't think many are expecting them to make the playoffs, but are expected to take some massive steps forward in their development with the core that they have. Drake Batherson, Brady Kachuk, Josh Norris, all under 23 years old, I believe, as well as Thomas Shabbat, who's only 24. Matt Murray being 27, 28, still can be a solid goaltender if he bounces back, still being in the prime of his career, as well as Gustafson, who looks to be the future net miner, I believe only 22 years old. So there is a bright future on this Sens team, but in terms of them making the playoffs, I don't think there's much expectation there, but definitely to be much more competitive and like the Red Wings, give some people some headaches. Now, I could see the argument why you'd want to flip-flop Detroit and Ottawa since they're very similarly constructed. But in terms of Ottawa, based on the second half they had last season, I think there is a little bit more pressure for them to take that next step. Whereas the Red Wings, if they kind of fall flat and are not quite as competitive as people thought, I don't think it will come as too much of a disappointment compared to Ottawa. So yeah, these bottom three here, they were relatively easy in terms of the pressure. I mean, none of these three teams are expected to make the playoffs. 
Some might say Ottawa could surprise. It's very possible, but I think this Atlantic division is very tough. I think it's going to be difficult for any of these teams to make the playoffs. So in terms of them having any pressure to win the Stanley Cup, there's none whatsoever this year at least. But after that, this is where it got a little bit tricky. Wasn't really sure how to rank these teams. Well, I mean, I eventually came up with my list here. But it was a little bit more of a toss-up here, but right away, we'll just get into it. So at number five, I actually have the Tampa Bay Lightning. Now, looking at this list, a team that's already won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, maybe some of you would say that's a little bit low. I mean, this team has been a dominant force over the last couple of seasons, and for them to only be number five on this list, maybe that's a hot take. But for me, it's pretty simple. When you make the argument that they've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups, that's basically where I'm coming from. That's my point. You think there's more pressure on this team now that they've won back-to-back -back Stanley Cups? If anything, I think their pressure is even lower now. I mean, I get they're still a dominant team, and of course they're expected to make the playoffs and compete for that third straight Stanley Cup. But in terms of winning it, I mean, the fact that they've already done it twice before, I don't feel like the pressure is as high. Now, obviously, a disappointing year for the Lightning would be if they completely fall off a cliff, not even make the playoffs, maybe even being a first-round exit, that would be disappointing. But in terms of pressure to win a third straight Stanley Cup, if they don't get the job done, I don't think that is that big of a deal, especially considering this team is still going to be good for a very, very long time. Nikita Kucherov is 28 years old. Braden Point's 25. Stamkos, although he's 31, still has a ton of prime years left with him, especially as well with Victor Hedman, who's 30, and Vasilevsky, who maybe only is entering his prime right now at 27. There is going to be a ton of time for this team to compete for even more Stanley Cups. So in fourth here, I decided to go with the Montreal Canadiens. So Montreal is a bit of a weird case for me. I think they could potentially be fifth and having less pressure to win than Tampa, just because Tampa has already proven they're a dominant force. Whereas Montreal, yeah, they made an amazing run to the Stanley Cup Finals, but are many people even projecting them to make the playoffs this season? You know, especially given that tough Atlantic division, I think it's going to be very difficult for them to get in, but obviously they could surprise. Regardless if you think they're a playoff team or not, I still feel like there is a little bit more pressure than people might think. Now, obviously, if you don't think they're going to make the playoffs or if most people don't think they're going to make the playoffs, and obviously that takes a significant amount of pressure off. But considering the run they made to the finals, I feel like that does add a little bit of pressure that this team could still still compete, you know, for a cup potentially. And maybe there is some, you know, some concerns that they kind of need to win now, right now, as some of their core guys are getting a little bit older. Of course, Carey Price in net at 34 years old. I mean, time is kind of now for him right now as he starts to decline in these coming years. When you look at the blue line, it's much older. I mean, Ben Sherrod is 30 years old. You know, David Savard's 30, just coming off a cup with the Lightning. The number one defenseman, Jeff Petrie, who's been outstanding last year offensively, but he's 33 now. Like, how much more of prime years do we have left of Jeff Petrie? And you look at the forward group, it's relatively young. I mean, Nick Suzuki, Cole Coffey, they're going to be in the league for a while. But I mean, you know, your highest paid forward right now is Brendan Gallagher, who's, you know, 29 years old, but... You could argue that, you know, the best years of his career are behind him considering the way that he plays and especially if he's only going to be used in a bottom six role, likely he might be starting on the third line this season. There's just some guys that are getting up there in age. It's just a weird combination on this Habs team with, you know, some young guys, but also there's a lot of vets on this team too. With older guys who are still in their primes, but you know, getting a little bit older, that does add a little bit of pressure, which is why, especially since this team has not won a Stanley Cup since 93, there is a little bit of pressure on this team to do something. But will they do anything is the question. So in third here, I have the Florida Panthers. I was tempted to put Montreal even ahead of Florida, considering Florida's core is a lot younger, in my opinion. But in terms of expectations, when you factor those in, Montreal's a team that, you know, despite the finals run, a lot of people aren't even projecting them to make the playoffs. Whereas the Panthers, a lot of people are really high on this team and think that they can take the next step to being a legitimate Stanley Cup contender. For this Panthers team, it's been all playoff failures over the last like 20 years. I mean, they've barely made the playoffs over that span, but when they have, they've been a consistent first round exit. They have not won a playoff series since 1996, so that obviously doesn't help. And because people think they can take that next step to being contender, there's definitely some pressure for this team to make some noise in that Atlantic division. But in terms of the pressure of them to win a cup this season, I don't think it's as high as those other two teams, which I'll get into later. I mean, I look at the core. Spencer Knight is going to be their number one goaltender of the future. He's only 20 years old, and he's already looking like he's going to be a very, very good goaltender in this league. You look at the defense, for the most part, it's very young, especially Aaron Ekblad, who's their number one guy, only 25 years old. You're looking at, you know, some of their other core players up front. Alexander Barkov, I believe, is 26. 
and Huberto 28. I mean, there's a lot of very young guys on this team still. So I think the window just opened for Florida. So I think they're going to have a ton of opportunity to compete for a Stanley Cup, probably be in the running for it over the next decade. So I feel like for this season, at least, I don't feel like the pressure is as high as some other teams. But at the very least, I think a fair estimation of where this team should be, win a damn playoff series, get out of the first round, show people that you're on the rise and that you're ready to really take the next step in being a contender and prove to everyone that you will be that team to beat over the next decade here in the Eastern Conference. Now, I feel like the top two here was the most obvious for most people. And I really think a lot of people have different opinions on this. You can really flip flop the two. But for me, this is where I have them ranked. All right, so the team I have ranked number two as to who I feel has the most pressure to win the cup this season would be the Toronto Maple Leafs. Now, we know the deal with Toronto. They're a great regular season team every season. Once they get to the playoffs, they always fall flat in the first round, and they have yet to win a playoff series since 2004. Now, some people think that the Leafs might not be as dominant as they were last season, take a little bit of a step back. I still think they're going to be a great regular season team, but obviously the pressure is definitely there, especially, you know, the biggest Canadian market in the league, maybe even the biggest market in the league. There's always pressure for this Leafs team to actually do something, but they've never done it, at least not yet. But because they, you know, their window has been open already for five years and they still haven't gone out of the first round, the pressure is starting to mount quite a bit on this team. Yes, they do have some young guys, Austin Matthews, Mitch Marner, both just 24 years old. So they still have a lot of years left in the tank, as well as William Nylander, who's only 25. You know, these guys basically in the primes, maybe only entering the prime of their career. So there's a lot of time for those guys to do something. But I think there is more pressure on some other guys like John Tavares, who's already 31. Still a really good player and going to be a good player for the next, you know, four or five years at the very least. But, you know, him, how many prime years we have left in him, we don't know at this point. As well as, you know, Jack Campbell, Peter Morazic, they're both 29 and they're both kind of like, you know, solid tandem goaltenders. I don't know if there's a true like number one stud goaltender in there. So there is some question marks there. So there's a little bit of pressure in terms of, you know, what kind of goaltending they'll get. Then on defense, I mean, there is some older guys. Brody, I think is in his early 30s, as well as Jake Muzzin and Morgan Riley, who although is 27, is a pending UFA. So there is a little bit of pressure on this team to win now this season. Now for me, what would be a successful season for Toronto? Obviously getting out of the first round, but I definitely think showing that you know they're making progress at least i think getting to an eastern conference finals would be considered a relatively successful season obviously you want to go all the way and win the cup every team wants that that's their ultimate goal right but i think for toronto they just want to be a team that could be taken seriously in the playoffs and at least going on a very deep playoff run would definitely kind of ease the pressure off a little bit but because how dominant the team is or how it looks on paper at the very least there is some pressure for this team to win a stanley cup at least in the very near future. So with that, the team in the Atlantic Division that I feel has the most pressure to win the Stanley Cup this season, I'm saying it's the Boston Bruins. Again, there's probably going to be people that argue that Toronto has more pressure, but for the Bruins, unlike Toronto, I feel like the Bruins' core is, you know, kind of getting up there in age. Although defensively, they're pretty young, especially with Charlie McAvoy being, you know, their number one guy, only being 23, 24 years old. There's a ton of time left for him, of course. And up front, you know, they do have David Pasternak, who's also like 25 years old. So he is going to be a stud in this league for like the next decade. I have no doubt about that. But apart from that, I do feel like time is kind of running out for this Bruins team to really compete for a Stanley Cup. When you look at the core pieces they have up front, you know, the rest of the core guys I didn't mention. Patrice Bergeron was like 35, 36 years old. Like there's going to be some sort of decline that's going to be happening very soon for him. Brad Marchand, who's 33, I still think is going to be an elite player for the next few years. But, you know, when you're getting into the 30s range, there's just time is going to be running out for these guys for sure. Obviously, losing David Krejci already is a huge loss, and that only ups up the pressure, you know, to win a cup this season because, you know, when you lose a key guy like that, it really just, you know, it's a hole in that lineup. And now they're really scrambling to try to win now, I think. Now, the goaltending tandem's pretty young right now. Linus Olmark, you know, 28 years old. You can say that maybe he's only entering the prime of his career. Jeremy Swayman is 22, a very young, solid goaltender, I think is going to be the future number one net miner for that Bruins team. And there's also Tuka Rask, who, you know, they have yet to sign. But if they do bring him back, he's like 34, 35. He's going to be on the back nine of his career as well. So, you know, the core that is there right now, there's just... It's getting older, and I do think that time could be running out. I mean, in two, three years' time, I don't know if this Bruins team is going to be, you know, the dominant force it once was, honestly. Like, you look at the rest of the Atlantic division, come two, three years, I still think Toronto and Florida, they have relatively young cores. They're going to be good. 
Teams like Ottawa and Detroit are going to be on the rise. They're going to be much more competitive. Montreal might still be hovering in there. Tampa Bay, I still think, is going to be a pretty good team. Boston, I think, you know, it's really, it now's the time. You know, in those next few years, who knows? They just might, you know, be falling down the cliff a little bit in those next couple of years. Although there is quite a few guys on this Bruins team that aren't even that old, Considering the type of weight that Patrice Bergeron and Brad Marchand carry on the offensive end, when those guys, you know, don't do it at the same level anymore, where is that offense going to come from? It's been an issue over the last few years. Offensive depth has been a huge, huge question mark for the Bruins. And, you know, this is a team that gets heavily carried offensively by that top line. Then you factor in, you know, their prospect pool. I mean, a lot of people would argue that it's not the deepest prospect pool in that Bruins system. So in summary, when you factor in the aging core, as well as the prospect pool they have, which, you know, by many is not considered the deepest in comparison to the rest of the NHL, it is win now mode for Boston. They only really have a couple of years left, in my opinion before they start to fall off in decline a little bit. All right, so that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Click like if you liked it, consider subscribing to the channel. Let me know what you think about my rankings here, who has the most pressure to win the cup in the Atlantic division. Based off of what my explanations were, do you agree with this list or do you maybe have some things differently? Would you change things here? Let me know down in the comments if you would like. I'll be doing this series for every other division because I just feel like it's a very interesting topic to talk about. If you guys would like me to talk about other topics, please let me know in terms of the NHL world what you want me to discuss. I'm open to new ideas. So again, thank you guys very much for watching this video and I'll talk to you in the next one. See you guys later.